Okay, hello, hey, hi. My name is William Riley, and uh, I do code at, um, well, my little handle is called Split Infinities. It's a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a really big fan of Radiohead, and so I tried to make this, uh, this talk called, um, uh, like, a, a, a jigsaw falling into place. But basically, what we're gonna do is, like, really quick, a uh, high-level overview of like some really cool technologies that are happening right now in uh, on the internet on web and um, Just like how I've used them and how hopefully you can use them But it's just like ridiculously brief hopefully super casual hopefully super entry-level um, So I am split infinities. This talk is called some things to think about uh, What's happening to web technologies? I love emojis. I'm kind of like an emoji druid it, it, it was on my Twitter bio for the longest time a uh, really big fan of that um, and the thinking emoji is my favorite. Uh, currently, I work at Flywheel, uh, front end developer, uh, previously Grand and Mortar, Urban and Smith, bunch of side projects. Um, that's me working. Uh, that's Dylan, his little emoji face right there, if you can see that. That's the thinking emoji on Dylan. Um, this is one of my favorite quotes by Dwight Schrute criminals, criminals are like raccoons. You give them a, case of ta uh, a taste of cat food, and pretty soon they'll be back for the entire cat, the whole cat. Okay, so we're going to start off with uh, networks. I'm a big fan of uh, non sequiturs. We're going to start off. <laughs> we're going to start off with networks. Um, so HTTP2. Who's heard of HTTP2? Cool. Nice. Awesome. Uh, basically, HTTP2 makes it so that uh, websites download like uh, typical large file downloads do. Uh, they open one TCP connection and then pump a bunch of stuff through. Uh, really exciting, awesome, and it makes sites faster. Actually, it even uh, can help you make uh, sites that uh, bah, 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 that are more um, modular, modular and maintainable, that don't break, which is really handy. Uh, so HTTP2 is a big deal, uh, led by Google and then uh, the IETF Working Group in uh, Internet Engineering Task Force. They took that uh, previously speedy, now HTTP2. Um, Definitely use this if you can. It's exciting. Uh, free TLS and SSL with Let's Encrypt. Like, this is a big deal because what we were doing and what I was doing, I had a side project called Hubdia, and it was a social platform, and I had a wildcard uh, certificate, and that was three hundred dollars a month, and like, fuck that. No, thank you. <laughs> um, now. Uh, Let's Encrypt doesn't support uh, uh, wildcard uh, 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 TLS certificates, but um, at the same time, you're getting free SSL, which is expensive, uh, or previously expensive. So that's a very big deal. Um, Flywheel actually last week, uh, two weeks ago maybe, uh, launched free SSL. And so you can just add that click of a button in the app. Big deal. Um, uh, ba -ba -ba. The team that did that, I think it's here, Andy Von Doren, Beth Halbert, uh, and a bunch of other people, but notably them. Um, HTML, let's talk about some HTML features. Uh, so picture, image, source set, these are uh, really cool because basically they make it so that you don't have to write a bunch of JavaScript to load a responsive image, uh, images. It just says, okay, the responsibility of uh, loading good images on whatever screen is now uh, handled by the browser and HTML. Like, thank you, because having to write uh, 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 responsive code for these images, for responsive images, it's, it's a challenge. It's and, and and it breaks very quickly, uh, especially as you're starting to get into um, wide gamut color. Which I don't know if any of you know what wide gamut color is. It's uh, you, your, your computers can now paint more pixels, and the iPhone 7 has it, the iPad, I think F Air has it, um, and, and I'm pretty sure that the new display port, uh, the new display, you know, uh, Apple monitor is going to have white color too. Um, so that's, an, that's, that, that's a really exciting thing, that these, these uh, HTML uh, attributes can just handle, you know, extremely good uh, images and you don't really have to write extra code that's totally going to break on different uh, uh, different devices. Um, web components. Web components is really cool, uh, but at the same time, it's kind of like really crappy because they co they they like defined it wrong. Um, React kind of solves the problem in a better way, but basically, web components was supposed to be built in parallel and shipped with HTTP2 because you can have a package of stuff that has different independent files and then load that, and uh, HTTP2 actually 
since we don't have to like turn a bunch of files into one file anymore, which is what we're doing with HTTP 1, with 2, all that stuff is in different files and you can load them and then they pump them through. Uh, if anything changes, that's awesome. You can now maintain stuff. Uh, Web Components was trying to work with HTTP 2 in that way. Um, but I think they goofed and so they're kind of like, oh, oh shit, oh shit, like Facebook did React right, what do we do? Let's kind of go back to the drawing board. But still, same time, this is, I think, a really valuable feature. I think this is what is going to happen over the next year, maybe two years. Um, yeah. Uh, Shadow DOM works with uh, web components in a really big way, makes it so that you can uh, scope CSS to specific elements. Like, uh, that has been a, a, a CSS and JavaScript to specific elements. So you can just pop something in and then now that's handling uh, whatever. You can now have a team working on different parts of the UI and it's just a, it's just a really nice way of uh, 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 splitting out responsibilities. Um, Shadow DOM helps that stuff. Scopes, that's fantastic. Like, thank you. Add to cart, please. Um, HTTP live streaming. This is something that I did on uh, Grain Mortar's website, Dylan as well. We made it so that uh, the home page loads a very, very fast version of a really high quality image, or uh, sorry, uh, video. Uh, video uh, Vimeo, the service, supports that uh, if you have their API and you just say, hey, load this HLS uh, video, and then it just does its magic. And it's been just phenomenal. It's a really, really cool uh, feature. So if you're using video, I'd highly suggest it. Uh, how much time do I have? Oh, I, mean, I heard the clap. Uh, CSS, uh, one of my favorite things, but also one of my, 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 my most hated things. But there's really cool features in CSS now, especially as Safari has been pushing the bar forward bit by bit. Number one, mixed blend modes. Uh, if you use, if you're a designer, who's a designer? Raise your hand. Beautiful, I love it. Uh, Mixed blend modes are like the multiply effect with colors or the screen effect with colors, stuff like that. Um, you can do so much gorgeous stuff now and you can make like Instagram filters in CSS, uh, which I find absolutely fascinating and I think that this is a big part of where the web is gonna go more and more, like more design, thank you, please. Um, filters, you can also blur stuff. Uh, you can you can grayscale, you can do, uh, do sepia tones, like. All that Instagram goodness, like, thank you. Um, Flexbox. Flexbox, Dylan touched on this a little bit. Uh, it, it, it makes it so that you can uh, better handle uh, a layout. Uh, grid, I think, and I've, I've seen it, uh, is, I think I have it here. No, I don't. Um, grid is like, I can't wait for that to ship and get like 90% so I can fucking use it because it is honestly a game changer. Uh, it, absolutely one of the, the, the best CSS features I just want everywhere. <laughs> um, we also have really cool type features. Uh, we have like anti-aliasing. We can get rid of widows uh, and orphans, which were, or, well, that sounds weird saying it out loud, but basically, <laughs> but, but um, making it so that t uh, copy, it, when it wraps, uh, you don't have just one word uh, 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 on its own, on its own line. Um, that's a widow. Uh, so we, we can just say widows, like, I think that the, 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 the uh, 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 attributes value is none. I might be wrong, but really helpful, and it's like 98% supported. Um, but, and, and nobody tends to actually just like type it in. It's so small, but oh, it's, it helps for legibility. Um, we also have kerning stuff that makes it so that you can actually read copy and it doesn't look totally bad. Like, thank you. Uh, we also have beautiful system fonts, which is another thing that I'm working on on a side project right now that is basically just, uh, GitHub launched uh, 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 system fonts. They use San Francisco on Mac and they used a uh, Windows uh, font stack on uh, Windows and it is gorgeous. And the, I, I, I don't understand the reason why people don't use system fonts. I get the, the whole like argument for, uh, oh, I get the whole argument for, uh, 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 I don't know, really cool, awesome CSS things that's also being pushed by systems. Let's move on. Um, functional CSS design. So who here has heard of uh, classitis on CSS, in CSS? Classitis? This is literally classitis, like exclusively. 
Uh, it makes it so that you don't write CSS anymore. Um, it makes it so that you have one maintainable, very small, over-documented file, and you can just say, and, and, and uh, React and Redux, which Sandy Barr is going to be talking about it later on. Next. That's exciting. Yes. <laughs> Stick around. Um, uh, it makes it so that you can better uh, modularize uh, all of your design patterns and um, update stuff that could happen. Um, yeah, I can't wait for Sandy's talk. Uh, Tachyons is a really good example of this, and Basis is also a great example. Uh, JavaScript. Uh, look at those thinking emojis. I love it so much. Oh my gosh. Um, so WebSockets is really cool. Lets you pump information between a client and a browser ridiculously fast if anything updates. Like, that's great because what's happening on web is we're, we want to be able to see new stuff as soon as possible and because we're greedy users. Uh, and WebSockets enables that to happen instead of uh, more congestive and uh, 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 bad practices of like polling with uh, uh, Ajax. Um, we also have a cache API for URL data. Uh, uh, so like if you have an API, you can use the cache API to, uh, in your browser, make it so that that thing is now like saved away and you don't have to uh, hit the browser so much anymore or you can just ask for changes, like thanks. Uh, index D, uh, DB for anything that mutates from that um, or uh, any other kind of information. One of the things, like we have the Bar Camp Omaha uh, 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 schedule site. I would have loved, oh my gosh, I would have super loved to be able to uh, do the, the uh, schedule in Index DB so that I could just say, okay, cool, just ask for changes instead of what we're doing right now, which is like we pull the site every 15 seconds or so and then load new speakers. Um, there's also, in JavaScript, a new framework called React. And uh, like I said, Sandy's going to super jam on it. Um, uh, and, and, and another thing that's like a mad slimmed down Chew, uh, uh, a mad slimmed down React, which is called Chew.js, it just gives you exactly what you need. Um, like when I start a JavaScript uh, project, I want to be able to have a router. I want to be able to have components. Uh, it can be uh, just called super easily, and then um, that feels, oh, and, and then a way to manage uh, state. And Chew, React, they do it really well. Uh, sensor APIs. This is one of my honest favorite like things, because what you get to do is you get to, like, on web, pay attention to what's happening with your device. Uh, you can, like, cover your, well, you can't yet, uh, but you can, like, cover your screen and uh, make it so that your site reacts to if you know someone is laying in bed and they're using a website, they don't want to be like bombarded with bright light. Like that's a bummer. No, thank you. So here's a little like here's a little darker CSS. Here's a little darker site for you. Um, accelerometer. If you saw the website uh, for Bar Camp Omaha on your phones, um, it makes it so that you can just like move your phone back and forth. And the little toys they move left and right. They uh, they kind of respond to a bunch of different stuff. So it's really cool. Also force touch on web so that you can. Uh, like play with, yeah, uh, iOS's uh, force touch, which is actually really, really fun. Um, I'm working on that with a side project right now. Uh, web audio is cool. Now we can do good sound design on web. Like, thank you. Um, it, 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 Firefox led this, uh, and uh, they shipped it in uh, honestly like one of the cleanest APIs that I've ever seen and there's just so much cool stuff that people are doing with it. Um, I'm just like constantly fascinated with what people are doing with web audio. But hopefully what we can do iteratively is like get away, get away from the stigma, I think. I mean this may be an unpopular opinion, but um, get away from the stigma of don't autoplay on uh, uh, a website. Don't autoplay audio on a website. Uh, there's got to be a tasteful way to do that. I would like to explore that, so I'm going to figure that out. Side project. Um, so moving on from uh, ba -ba -ba JavaScript features, uh, developer operations. So Webpack is amazing. And I'm using it on a side project right now. And the challenge is that it's kind of hard to get into. But as soon as you get into it, it's like, oh, wow. That was like way better than I expected ever. <laughs> um, it's it's just one configuration file. It's like one one JSON. Just like here's a bunch of stuff, and here's how you're gonna do your thing, and then go. Uh, it's fantastic. 
Um, we also have gulp, and I have the little scary emoji because uh, the web moves so fast, and gulp feels like it just beat grunt. <laughs> and now webpack is happening, and it's like, oh my god, there's so many things that we have to pay attention to. Uh, but I really do feel like Webpack and Gulp are, uh, uh, like, I feel like those are solid solutions. I'd like to see, I'd like to see, I don't know, I'd like to see more Webpack uh, uh, stuff being talked about in an accessible, like, English way. Uh, human. Um, we have also, we've also got Codeship. Uh, Codeship is really cool. Uh, it basically, so one of the challenges and the way that I've been working with on um, uh, projects, uh, especially on Flywheel, is I have uh, our, my, my WordPress theme in a Git repo, and whenever I push to it, what I want to do is I want to take all that code and put it on the site, like immediately. The challenge is that uh, right now, Flywheel doesn't have a way to compile assets, so you have to include the uh, compiled assets in the Git repo. So one of the ways around that is one, use uh, code chip. Well, one of the ways around that is one, use deploy HQ and compile the assets and then add that to the Git repo. But like, no thank you. Dylan can attest to this. We've had so much like clashing trying to get stuff working and then we have to like resolve conflicts and it's like, this is the worst. Uh, code chip solves that problem. Don't, com uh, it, it, it pushes it off to a server, compiles the assets, then it says, okay, hey, we're gonna deploy, and then it deploys that stuff. Um, that solves the problem in an extremely great way. Uh, so if you're using Flywheel, I highly suggest uh, give CodeShip a, a, a shot. I can't say that, that you know Flywheel endorses that. Um, I'm using it and I like it a lot, uh, but I definitely suggest that. Uh, GitHub reviews like launched this week, and it's a game changer because what we used to do, we, we would, we would uh, in Slack, like, hey, we need someone to look at this. Is this good? Or we need someone to, um, yeah, we, we have all the conversation about a pull request inside of Slack. Not very helpful. Uh, you lose context, and it's kind of tough. GitHub reviews, I think, solves that problem in a really nice, clean, elegant way, and it's just like dead simple. You just start a review and then you go ba 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 and then say uh, approved for uh, merging and then you're good. Um, yeah. So that's it. <laughs>